So I was doing some grading this morning and last night, and there's a couple of things about ratios that I just like to go over once more face to face, as much as that's face. It's my face. So a couple of things. First, you got to pay special attention to the order of the wording. For example, let's say that we have uh, cookies. I like cookies. We have the ratio of um, chocolate cookies. I'm just going to put taco cookies. to M&M cookies is, let's say, two to three. We know that we can write two to three as two, two, three, two, two, three with the colon and as a fraction, two over three, or two, two, three, as we're writing them in on the computer. And what that means is that for every two chocolate chip cookies, we have three M&M cookies. So if I increase the number of chocolate chip cookies by two, I have to increase the number of M&M cookies by three. If I increase the number of chocolate chip cookies by one, I increase the number of M&M cookies by one and a half. Let's not go there right now. But Two to three. There are two chocolate chips for every three, every three um, M&M cookies. Important ratio. Chocolate chip cookies to M&M cookies is two to three. Two refers to the first one, three refers to the second one. It's even in the same orders, and it, order, and it even says chocolate chip cookies to M&M cookies. Two, two, three. So we know that the first one refers to the first one, and the second one refers to the second one. Okay. So in questions like this one that you had on your homework yesterday, what the ratio of girls to boys in the school, there were 10 girls and nine boys in a class. Um, 10, nine boys, two, 10 girls. A lot of people said that the correct answer, there are nine boys for every 10 girls, or there are 10 girls for every nine boys. Be very specific about which one is going first. Yes, you can switch them around, but you need to make sure that the numbers switch with the words. If I was writing this as the ratio of girls to all students in the school, I would have to figure out how many students are in the school total. So, how many students are in the school? I said school, it should be class. In the class total, well, I figured that out by adding the two points together. 19. So, the ratio of boys to total, and notice the boys to total, boys, to total would be nine to the total, which is 19. Girls to total equals, how many girls are there? 10 to how many total? 19. Okay. The ordering is important in that boys to girls should be written as boys to girls. I could write it girls to boys. That doesn't matter as long as the number with the word stays the same. Mouse. And another thing. Ratios are a lot like fractions um, in that you can reduce them. You can simplify them. You can write them in simplest terms. If I have the ratio as shows on your assignment 6 to 12, whatever that might be for every six fiction books, you have 12 nonfiction books, or maybe you have six pet or st six stuffed cats and 12 stuffed guinea pigs. I don't know. But if your ratio of stuffed cats to stuffed guinea pigs is 6 to 12, Again, remember, 6 to 12, cats to guinea pigs, 6 to 12, 6 refers to cats, 12 refers to guinea pigs. You can reduce that to get a single unit ratio. Reducing that, the same way we reduce a fraction. If this was a fraction, we could write it as 6 
over 12 cats to guinea pigs. And we would reduce that by finding the greatest common factor or any common factor and dividing until we couldn't divide anymore. I saw a lot of people do this, which is perfectly correct. To a point. Six divided by two divided by two because common factor of six and 12 is two. Cool, that's three, six, done. What else can I do? We have another common factor here. We have another common factor. We can keep going. What can we divide these by? Three. Three divided by three is one. Three, six divided by three is two. I probably should speak towards the microphone, not towards the whiteboard, but now our ratio is one half. For every one stuffed cat, I have two stuffed guinea pigs. If you have that many, that is incredible because stuffed guinea pigs are hard to find. But finding the greatest common factor, if I wanted to do that, I could multiply those two together and I would multiply that by six. If I don't want to take all those steps, I can just find the greatest common factor and divide them both. It's fine. Also, don't forget the important rule of fractions applies to the important rule of ratios. What you do to the top, we do it at the bottom, and vice versa. 